Thanks very much for the opportunity to talk again this year. Uh, what a, basically what I'm going to go through today is, uh, is how we went about launching Ran Up Ready in, in uh, 2010, uh, you know, understanding that a lot of the hard work was done in 2009 basically, uh, particularly by, uh, by New Farm, I'd like to acknowledge sort of off the bat, they, uh, they did a hell of a lot of work in 2009 to, to get us to the point where we are today, so uh, yeah, acknowledge and thank them for that. So uh, you can talk a bit, bit about the launch and uh, a couple of the key recommendations that we were making um, for people to think about when they, when they went in and, and grew up for the first time. Um, put a little bit in the middle there on, on you know, how we saw the weed control and the yield performance here in WA. And then finish up with uh, what, what we expected to do this year in 2011. Um, some of the recommendations that, that, that we're making based on what we saw last year and then uh, just a, a few of the changes to things like the crop management plan and some of the, some of the label additions that we've got. So as I said in 2010, we basically um, a little bit over 12 months ago, uh, the, end of, the end of January 2010, we finally got the go ahead to, to come in and, uh, and go commercial with Roundup Ready in WA, which was um, very exciting for us obviously. Uh, once that decision was made, it was a pretty, pretty manic eight weeks basically where we, uh, we, we established our technology service providers, tried to locate them you know, right across the state so that everyone could get, um, get access to it where they needed it, where it was close. Um, a lot of help from the TSPs to get their growers in, uh, come to the accreditations and, and get their information on Roundup Ready Canola. So basically, we, yeah, we had eight weeks. Uh, we had 30 different venues where we ran the accreditations a mixture of, um, uh, with the technology service providers and, and with ag departments and um, just general meetings. We ended up having 850 people come to the accreditation, so that was, um, that was fantastic. Showed that there was a hell of a lot of interest in it in WA. So out of all of that, uh, when we finally added up the numbers at the end of June 2010, um, we, we worked out we'd had 328 growers plant uh, almost 73,000 hectares. So that was a uh, that was a, a really great result, something that um, we didn't anticipate. We were, we were thinking it, it might be around about the 30,000 hectares, but uh, it showed that there was a, a, a real lot of demand for, um, for the new technology over here. I've just broken this slide down by the, by the ag zones. Um, yeah, as you can see, you know, the majority of it was in ag zones two and three, which is uh, probably what we'd expect. Um, we did have the, the, the most of the, the trials in 2009 were located in those regions, so people got to got to see quite a bit of it in 2009. Um, uh, probably, you know, the thing that sticks out most when you look at that slide is how much uptake there was in Ag Zone Four, where you, we, you know, we wouldn't usually expect to see a lot of canola. Um, so that that obviously said that there was some people out there in, in the lower rainfall areas that were really looking at Roundup Ready canola as providing um, something that they hadn't hadn't had before. So as we, were, as we were getting around and, and running the accreditations and talking to people, a couple of the, I guess, the really key points that we were trying to make um, for growers to get the most out of the, the weed control um, or out of the system was um, to really try and enter the Roundup Ready, um, the Roundup Ready crop with as low a weed burden as possible. So you know, try and don't put too much pressure on the Roundup to, to deliver um, excellent weed control in your, in your worst paddocks. So, really you know, use a range of tools to, to help you get that weed control. So um, yeah, entering with a, with a low weed burden was a key one. The two, stray, the two spray strategies, so what I mean by that is the two uh, roundup over the top sprays in the, in the crop was something that we, we really harped on about ad nauseum and, and, uh, and New Farm certainly did as well. And uh, uh, everything we've seen, it's absolutely essential we believe that the, the two sprays uh, are needed to get the, the the weed control that, that you'd be looking for. And then the, the third one was how important crop competition is for that season long weed control. So we're talking about once that last spray goes on, um, it's really, there's no residual in the, in the system, it's really up to the crop then to, um, to outcompete any of those late, late germinating weeds. So just on a couple of those, just to, just to reinforce how those messages came across to growers, uh, this, this chart comes out of the, um, the post-spray surveys that, that we got the technology service providers to perform for us uh, end of July, start of August. And, 
as we said, go, go into that crop with a, with a low weed burden. That includes using um, a range of tactics and a pre-emergent would be, would be one of the tactics that we'd advocate. And it really showed that, um, the grow, that on, the, on the whole growers got that message and, um, and really did try to use uh, a pre-emergent um, and try and enter that, that round ready crop with a, with a low weed burden. So that was, that was something that we were very pleased about. Um, this is a chart from, from Mark, uh, sorry, a, a picture from um, some work that Mark Slatter from New Farm did in uh, Victoria. And again, I really want to acknowledge the, the amount of work that New Farm are doing um, uh, to make sure that, that growers are, are getting the best out of this technology and, and really showcasing how to best use it. So what, if you look at this picture, uh, these three down the left hand side, we've got Roundup Ready Canola with the use of no pre-emergent chemistry. In the middle we've got Roundup Ready Canola with uh, two litres of Trifluor X as a pre-emergent. And down here we've got Roundup Ready Canola with two litres of Trifluor X plus two litres of Abidex. And then uh, across the top here we've got no Roundup Ready herbicide spray, one Roundup Ready herbicide spray and two Roundup Ready herbicide sprays. So I think it's a, it's a great picture. It really shows that um, the Roundup Ready system is good with the two sprays. Very, it, it, you will get excellent weed control. But in a situation like that with a lot of pressure, if you can, if you can take that pressure off with a pre-emergent and use your two sprays, um, you're going to get the best weed control and it's, it's a, a very sustainable use of, of all your options. Uh, this chart just shows the, the two, spray me, two spray strategy message and how that came across to growers. Um, again, from our, from our post-spray survey results that we did, and uh, I, I like the look of that green. It says that, that uh, almost all growers use two sprays. Um, a few that use one spray were probably caught out a little by the, by the window closing on them. Um, we, we certainly did have that on in some cases. And uh, and uh, poor fella up there who had no spray, I don't know whether that's a typo from him or, or something went wrong, but I don't think his, um, his weed control was what he was really looking for. But yeah, two sprays, that message got across. And uh, if, if, if you leave the room today with one, with one message about Rennet Ready Canola, it'd be you know, really use that two sprays if you're going to use it. So that's, that's, that's just a, a quick summary on the rollout and, and how we launched. Um, the, the real key point, I think, for WA was that there was a huge amount of interest in Rennet Ready Canola last year. And I think that was because, uh, on the whole, growers uh, recognised that they need to use all the available options um, that they can. To, to get um, you know, a profitable canola crop, but probably more importantly is have a, a profitable and sustainable rotation over, over all their crops. So um, I think that's why we saw such a huge amount of interest and in, in big uptake. So in terms of performance, um, there's, a, there's a lot of ways to cut out um, this information and a lot of it will be talked about from, from others that, uh, at the crop updates over these two days. But, um, I've just got a few things in here to show how we looked at the weed control and yield performance. And again, um, I really encourage you to go out and get your information from as many sources as possible. Um, but, but I believe these are a fair representation of the type of information that's out there. Uh, this first one is some, some work that, that we did, some Monsanto work that was done in Skipton in Victoria last year. And um, uh, what I like about it is um, it, it really shows the uh, it really shows the, that comparison between the, the three systems and, and you know, what we, do, we would expect growers to get when they use Roundup Ready in the way that we're, we're um, saying it should be used. So these numbers are really looking at annual ryegrass at a, at a heavy, um, heavy population in, in Skipton. Um, the first count is prior to the first in-crop spray. Okay? So that count is just prior to, the, to either the Intervix or the, the Roundup Ready going on. And with the, um, the TT system in red, uh, it had some. It had pre-emergent atrazine, and this is prior to the, the post-emergent um, uh, simazine going on. So you can see that the atrazine did a good job, took out a lot of that early ryegrass in the TT. Um, uh, we see in the in the roundup that there was there was obviously quite a lot there, but that 100% control basically with the first spray of roundup took out everything. Um, and then just with the uh, you know for a range of reasons. Um, Resistance, the vagaries of trying to get atrazine and Intervix to, to really work work well. Um, last year, we saw that we ended up with weeds at the end of the season. So these are these are final pinnacle counts in those different systems. So uh, with the Roundup system, two sprays, 100% weed control. Um, while the weed control for the other systems was good, 
it was um, it was inferior to what, what we saw with the roundup. Um, I think that's backed up by what we did in WA last year, and at this point. Um, I want to acknowledge the work that Landmark did on our behalf. They, they put in two trials for us last year. Um, Darren Chitty looked after those and did an excellent job of running them. And I think the Landmark team on a whole did a good job of making themselves familiar with what was going on in that trial and, and conveying that out to growers. So um, congratulate them, that, them on that. So what, what this chart shows is um, A, the, the comparison in weed control at a site that has group A and group B resistant ryegrass. Um, it's, it's showing uh, how effective Roundup Ready is in that sort of scenario uh, compared to TT. And it's also showing, um, uh, well, we also wanted to show the importance of, of crop competition for that late season weed control. Unfortunately, the way the season worked out at that site, um, uh, we got excellent weed control in the Roundup system, even at those very low planting rates. Um, but again, final, final pinnacle counts, the TT system uh, had quite a lot of, of uh, annual ryegrass there at the end of the year. The ryegrass that was there had survived the atrazine and select sprays that went on, so it was quite competitive. It was able to set quite a lot of seed, and the, the very few ryegrass uh, panicles that were in the Roundup system were from plants that had germinated very late in the crop. They were poor competitors, and essentially were unable to, to put a lot of seed back into that seed bank. And then finally, um, moving away from the, the more technical look at weed control, um, this is how growers reported to us that they saw their weed control in, in commercial situations last year. So uh, two, two timings when we did when we ran this survey. The first one was at post-spray survey time, so around about August, and the second one in the dark grey, they were that was a survey that was conducted um, after harvest, a post-harvest uh, post survey. So the key point from this chart is uh, when we when we surveyed growers in August, they just finished their second weed control spray, had a look at their crops, and they rated primarily rated their, their weed control um, uh, in, the, in the Roundup Ready as excellent, and remembering that the majority of growers use the two sprays. But by the time we got to harvest and we did that survey again, we saw that there was a drop off in the amount of growers that were, that were rating that weed control as excellent, and there was a, an increase in the growers that were rating it as good. And I think, I think what that's all about is that those 20% of growers that we saw change is about that third germination of, of ryegrass in their crops. So again, my key point is, once the two sprays go on, it's really up to the crop to, to outcompete whatever else is there. Um, and uh, and you know, if we can do that, we'll, we'll get the excellent weed control. So just moving on to yield and, uh, and what we saw there, this, again, there's a, there's a heap of ways that we can look at this, and I've just pulled out a couple. Um, if we look at the NVTs from New South Wales and, uh, and WA last year that were, that were taken through, um, uh, through to the season and we got some good results, got results from. Uh, look at Roundup in the green, Clearfield in grey and, and uh, the TT in red and these circle trials are all the WA trials. So across all those nine sites, um, six out of the nine had Roundup significantly higher yielding than the TTs, which is the message we've been trying to promote um, for, for 12 months and longer in the east. Um, and when we look at uh, across all those sites, that difference between Roundup Ready and TT and yield was 21% and significantly higher. So again, this is this is you know the message we've been saying is that you know growers should be using some Roundup Ready in their system because of the weed control, but also because of the higher yields compared to TTs. And we think the NVTs from last year um, uh, back up that message. Uh, again, a, a, a more subjective rating of. Um, of the yields when we, we did the post-harvest survey and we, we um, asked all our growers who, who had grown Roundup Ready and TT on their farms, not necessarily head-to-head um, -head in the same paddock, but um, who had grown both systems, um, and added them all up. We, uh, we had 55 growers come back and say, on the whole, our Roundup Ready averaged about um, 660 kilos to the hectare, and our TT averaged just under uh, 600 kilos to the hectare, so a 10% difference in yield there. And then just one, one final way to look at it, um, and uh, just thank Justin Kudnig from Pacific Seeds for, um, uh, for this slide. He, uh, this is something that, that he'd put together. Um, 
If we look at it on a gross return in dollars per hectare, taking all the costs of, of all systems into account, including seed and technology fees for the Roundup Ready system, the NVTs show last year that the Roundup Ready varieties in red um, were, were among the top performers, and particularly when we compare it to the, the TTs as a class. Um, you know, if we look across all of those, those six NVTs that, that this data comes from, uh, the Roundup Readies are, are really sort of leading the way in terms of um, returns and profitability. So one of the key points we've tried to make all the way through with Roundup Ready is that we, we don't see that, that growers should drop all their canola, all their other HT systems and grow Roundup Ready. We think it should be a part of the system. All three have their place. Uh, and in recognising that, um, we, you know, we, we think both commercial situations and the trial, trial results from a range of sources last year show that, that Roundup Ready can, can offer the, um, the, the most superior weed control of the HT systems and, it, and it, uh, with the yields of the high yielding varieties can be the most profitable as well. So that's why, we, again, we, we think growers should be, um, should be incorporating Roundup Ready into their system. Uh, so just as, I, just as I finish up, uh, what we expect in 2011, um, 330 growers last year, we expect that to go to uh, 400 plus this year, and the early indications from our technology service providers are that that will be the case. Um, and we think we'll have about 100,000 hectares going in WA. Uh, just broken, broken that pie down again to show where, the, where we expect the hectares to come from in WA. I think the, the biggest change to that first chart we saw is, um, is what's going on down in Ag Zone 6. Looks like there's, there's going to be uh, a very dramatic increase in Roundup Ready down in that Esperance Zone. Uh, and and uh, strong again in Ag Zones 2 and 3, where we'd, yeah, in those medium to higher rainfall areas um, is where we'd expect the canola, the Roundup Ready canola to be taken up. Where we think it fits, or it has its best fits in WA, um, I think primarily uh, it, it, it will be used to target Group A and B resistant annual ryegrass and, and I think that's, that's the best fit for it at the moment. Uh, why, is that, that, why is that important? Uh, because when we looked at our growers that grew last year and surveyed them on, on the amount of resistance that they have already, uh, the majority of WA growers responded and said that they've got Group A and B resistance. So um, that's why we think Roundup Ready will be important for them. Um, uh, we think the combination of the high yielding varieties and the superior weed control um, in, in combination add more profit to the program. So uh, again, we think growers in the, in the medium to high rainfall areas who are, who are looking for um, canola as being you know, one of their most prof profitable crops will be, will be looking to uptake Roundup Ready. And again, I can't stress enough, um, and I know there's a lot of our growers in the room who, uh, who saw quite a lot of this last year and, and uh, would, agree, would agree with me that um, the importance of crop competition to get that season on weed control just, just can't be understated and uh, you know, really hope that you're getting that message across to growers. In terms of the crop management plan, we've got some slight changes this year. Um, we'll, we will no longer be doing the, um, uh, the post-spray survey in July and August. Uh, that's been changed. It's going to be, we're going to implement a resistance management survey where our technology service providers will, will go back to growers from the, from the previous season and, and find out all the, the different range of weed control tactics they use both in the canola and, and post canola to make sure that the resistance management plan is working. Uh, we'll also have a, a submission into the APVMA to review Pramog for 2012 to better account for paddock weed pressure um, and uh, to, to modify some of those management options available to, to make sure that that resistance management plan is, is, is you know, as good as it can be. And finally, before I finish, I just wanted to again uh, uh, thank and thank New Farm and highlight the, the work they've done to get some additions to the Roundup Ready label for, for growers in 2011. Um, this year, they'll, the additions that they've got are LI700, uh, Archer, which is a, their chlorpyrrolid product, um, astound you on dimethylate, so that's um, uh, one of the one of the key things that growers wanted last year was those tank mix op tank mix options, and uh, you can thank New Farm that, that now you'll have those. So that's it for me.
Not sure that's correct. We, we, we uh, globally, we, we broadly cross license our trades with other providers. So uh, we actually have an agreement in place with Bayer where we, we could use each other's genes. Uh, it's more a commercial decision for the for the two companies to work out whether there's value in doing that. So Monsino's not a, averse to doing that. Companies here come in, they want to stack Roundup and Atrazine together, TP. Um, Roundup and Cleanfield, Roundup and Univenus and other industries. But Monsanto will not have that's their worth. It's really a commercial decision for, for both companies if they see value in it, but um, we, we do do that around the world and um, in the US we, we have corn products that, that we use other people's traits and they use ours, so it's, it's something that we do do. Um, and yeah, the, the specifics of the Roundup and TT at, at the moment are, um, you know, I'm not making a comment on that, but I'm just making a comment on, on that we, you know, we do broad cross-licensing um, arrangements. So. I've just got a question about nutritional requirements for Roundup and canola. Is that different to the TTs or the traditional canola? Um, it's probably a better question for um, uh, for potentially one of the seed companies or one of our one of our department researchers. But essentially, it's it's just canola. Um, it's slightly higher yielding, so you know the, poten the potential there for some more. But but you know I would say it's just another crop and. It needs the, the nutrition that a you know, that a crop needs, so I wouldn't think there'd be a, you know, there's not a significant difference.